Chapter 36 The Jagged Castle We should kill her, Thorfinn, or turn her while we have the chance, the Countess insisted. We won't have anything to bargain with if she's dead, Roll argued. All we have to do is pretend she is still alive, she said. They are too weak, too noble to think we have killed her, if we say we still have her. They will demand proof, Elena. And we will deny them proof. They will not risk her life if they think there is even a chance she is still alive. Roll scowled with his teeth bared. Ah, Elena, they have a daywalker, a werewolf, a giant, and auras and wizards they can summon at a moment's notice. While we have the woman, we can keep them away. If we kill her and they find out, we have nothing. We have summoned your supporters. They can counter any wizards, especially with our help, Elena soothed. And you have your bag of toys the Watcher gave you. Let me kill the woman. I have not fed properly for days, nor have you. We had the old woman from the cottage just yesterday, he reminded her. We keep the head of magical law enforcement as our hostage, and as our prize. One scream from her, and they will stop in their tracks. When we kill her, you can have her to yourself. But we don't kill her until I say. The Countess shrugged. As you wish, Thorfinn. I will go into the night for food. Muggles are easier to catch in the dark. And their fear is so much more satisfying than their surprise. I like to play with them in the dark first. Do not be seen, Roll said. The whole Ministry will be seeking us now. It is only a matter of time before they find where we are. Let them, she snapped. You have your precious hostage. Let them come. Invite Potter here. Kill him, kill the woman, and break their spirit. Then we can strike and take control. Only if we have support, Roll said. We must wait until my supporters return before we do anything else. Even with the auras depleted, the two of us can't fight the whole ministry. Kill Potter and they will return, Thorfinn, Elena said. Invite them here to ransom the woman, the head of enforcement. Potter will come, we will kill him, and your followers will flock to us. Potter and his cronies will storm the castle. They'll bring an army. Tell Potter to come alone. He won't dare to risk the woman. He will do as you say to save her. It's too obvious a trap. He won't sacrifice himself, knowing that we still have Granger, and will likely kill her too. Let him bring another, she suggested. Let him bring the woman's husband with him. Potter is arrogant enough to think he and his friends can handle us. We have your watcher's bag of toys. The two of them cannot best us. Kill Potter, and make the other your slave. Have him kill his wife, and take their bodies to display in the ministry foyer. As they despair, we and our followers will move in and we will take charge. If Potter brings others with him, we send them away on pain of death, the woman's death. They will not risk her, she said. There was a knock at the heavy oak door. Master, came a call from beyond. And your supporters return, Elena said. Very well. I'll send Potter an invitation. You cannot go alone, hid Ora, Kingsley said. I won't be alone, Harry pointed out. Even if I hadn't been invited, there's no way Ron wouldn't be coming with me. That is not the point, and you know it, Kingsley growled. Two wizards are no match for two day walkers and however many of Roll's goons are left. If any more than two of us turn up, Harry said, Roll will kill Hermione. They will kill her anyway, Harry. This is a trap, the minister warned. Of course it is, Kingsley, Harry laughed, and then turned serious. But this is our only chance to get in there, to save Hermione, and grab Roll. You cannot know what you are up against. Exactly. Harry said. Going in's the only way you will find out. I need to talk to Stefano, then Ron and I are leaving. There is no talking sense into you, 
the minister complained. You're not the first to realise that, Kingsley, Harry told him. Why a port key, Harry? said Ron as they landed on the snow-scattered hillside. Harry pulled up the collar of his winter jacket against the cold highland wind. Didn't know the area well enough to operate, he explained. The castle's supposed to be at the end of this glen, by a lock. Just around this spur. Let's go before we freeze. We'll head down the slope where there's less snow. They walked further down and carried on towards the loch. The aura and the ex-aura came across a stone path, making the going much quicker than fighting through the bracken and heather. After reaching the path, they saw the castle, dark and angular against the end of the mountain spur. It was a stark and aggressive edifice, unlike most Scottish castles. It shimmered, hinting at the anti-muggle spells which must have surrounded it. In front of the castle lay the glassy loch. Do you get the feeling we've been watched, Harry? Ron turned to ask. I felt that way ever since we arrived. Harry was hurrying to keep up. Ron had longer legs and even more motivation than he had. Yeah, of course they're watching us. You don't imagine that scumbag's going to let us sneak up on him with an army, do you? Do you think it'll just be the two of them? The daywalkers, that is? Harry thought. We can only hope it is. This won't be easy, however it goes. But he locks down apparating, like he did at Malfoy Manor. Best not to worry about it, Ron said. Guns have to play it by ear. It's got on while there's still daylight. It was only mid-afternoon, but they were in northern Scotland, and it was overcast. There were few hours of light left. By the time they reached the castle gate, Ron was panting. Harry hoped Ron had not worn himself down too much on the walk. He needed him fresh, but his friend was no longer an aura. He had spent a long time working in the shop with George. Harry hoped he had not lost his edge. "'What do we do now?' Ron asked, breathing hard. "'Knock on the door?' "'Don't forget your recovery breathing, Ron,' Harry urged. "'I think they'll be letting us in, unless they pour molten lead off the battlements.' "'Come in, head aura,' Rol said, opening the steel-braced wooden door. He was in his human form, though not as Harry remembered him. There were subtle differences. He was taller and broader still than before. White streaked his blonde hair, but his eyes showed the greatest change. They were black, with flecks of blood red, but no whites. Harry flicked a glance at Ron as they stepped over the threshold. They found themselves in an expansive entrance hall, with a patterned stone floor and half-panelled walls. I regret the unfortunate circumstances, Hedora, Roll went on. We would like to discuss terms with you, and we needed a bargaining counter to bring you here. Where's Hermione? Ron blurted out. Roll held up his hands to calm him. Your wife is safe, he intoned. Naturally, we intend to hold her while we discuss an agreement. Until then, she is secure, unharmed, and comfortable. We need to be sure she's all right if you want us to negotiate, said Harry. Of course, Roll soothed. Before you leave here, to take our suggestion to the Minister for Magic, we will reunite you with Mrs. Granger Weasley. But first, please come through and sit with us where we can talk in comfort. Forgive me if I seem reluctant, Mr. Roll, said Harry. It's just that last time we met me you were digging your claws into my shoulders and dropping me from a great height. Roll continued to lead them across the entrance hall, but turned to address Harry. To say that all's fair in love and war, he answered. We were at war, Hedora. As I recall in our last meeting, you were sticking a roan stake into my side. Not unprovoked, I admit. Either of us might have killed the other. They had reached a sumptuous room with a roaring fire in a broad hearth. Roll gestured to them to sit on a comfortable brocade suite. Now is not the time for us to be at war, Roll continued. We cannot tear the magical community apart, when the world needs us to save it from the misdeeds of the muggles. Ron shifted in his seat. May I introduce you to my associate? Roll asked. Gentlemen, 
This is Countess Elena Stoyer. The Countess swept into the room, in a black and purple ball gown, bedecked with jewels. The gown clung to her torso, enhancing her figure. Her human face was flawless, balanced, beautiful. Harry and Ron rose to their feet. They bowed to her, without intending to, or understanding why. Gentlemen, she smiled, I come from visiting your Hermione. She is well, though rather displeased, naturally. She is not yet aware you are here, but she will be delighted to see you after we have spoken for a while. Can I offer you a glass of wine before we start, gentlemen? No, thanks, I'm on duty, said Harry. And I'm on edge, said Ron. As you wish, the Countess said, taking to an armchair. Please be seated. They sat again. Harry noticed Ron was clenching his fists until the knuckles were bloodless. There was something at the back of Harry's mind. He couldn't tell if it was a memory, a feeling, or a word. The Countess was saying something, but Harry was not listening to her words. He was listening to that one word lurking on the edge of his consciousness. It was a voice he remembered from long ago in school. It was a gruff voice. The word it was saying was, Imperio. Stoyer was trying subtly to control his mind. It was not the Imperius curse, but some vampire ability. The voice had warned him of the intent. Ah, here is the wine, Roll announced. Are you sure you won't join us? Two men, wizards, came in. One carried a crystal decanter of red wine. The other held a tray with four glasses. The one with the decanter seemed familiar to Harry. He was thick-set, with a low hairline. Harry looked at Ron, then back down at his own hands. No, we're fine, thanks, Harry assured their host. At the same moment, the head aura made a sign with his hands for Ron's benefit. It was a secret aura sign, which meant, time to make our move. We should probably start by talking about cake sniffers, Harry said. What? the Countess laughed. There came a roar and a howl. Behind the Countess, a vampire and a werewolf appeared, transfiguring into their beast forms. The vampire swept a shimmering cloak away with a flourish. There was a shattering crash as the decanter and glasses dropped to the floor. Roll's two servants pulled out their wands, but Harry and Ron were quicker. They stunned the wizards. The room went darker. Turning, they saw the Countess, in her beast form, wings outspread, blocking the firelight. Stefano and Lavender faced her, but Rolls stepped back, still in human form. He was pulling something from a pocket in his robes. It was a crystal. Accio! Harry shouted, but a shield spell blocked him. Four more wizards were running into the room, wands raised. Bombarda! Ron bellowed. The blast scattered the bodies of the wizards, and tore the double doors from their hinges. The way out to the entrance hall was clear. 